Chapter 8 In the Garden In June, the weather was hot. One evening, I walked into the garden. Mr. Rochester was there too. Do you like this house, Jane? He asked. Yes, sir, I replied. Soon, Adele will go to live at a school, Jane, he said. Then I will not want a governess here. Will you be sad then, Jane? Will you leave Thornfield Hall? Leave? I said quickly. Must I leave Thornfield? My dear. Mr. Rochester stopped. He was silent for a moment. Then he said, I am going to be married soon. Oh, sir, I said. Then I must go far away. Far away from Thornfield. Far away from you, sir. I started to cry. I will always remember you, Jane, Mr. Rochester said. Will you forget me? No, sir, I replied. I will never forget you. I don't want to leave Thornfield, sir. I don't want to leave you. Don't leave, Jane, Mr. Rochester said. Stay here. He smiled at me. I must not stay here, sir, I said. You are going to marry Miss Ingram. I am poor. I do not have a pretty face. But I have a heart. It is a loving heart, sir. Jane, I am not going to marry Miss Ingram, Mr. Rochester said. She is rich. She is beautiful. You are poor. You are not beautiful. But I want to marry you. Will you marry me, Jane? For a moment, I could not speak. At last, I asked, Do you love me, sir? I do, he replied. Then, sir, I will marry you, I said. And Mr. Rochester kissed me. My dearest Jane, he said, Nothing can stop our marriage now. We will be married in a month, Jane. We kissed again. Then I said good night, and I went into the house. I went upstairs to my room. Later, I remembered my Uncle John Eyre's letter. I will write to him in Madeira, I said to myself. I will tell him about my marriage to Mr. Rochester. I am very happy. My uncle will be happy too. Four weeks passed. Mr. Rochester was going to buy me many beautiful things. He was going to give me many presents. But I did not want these things. No, Edward, I said. I am not beautiful. I don't want beautiful things. I want you, Edward. It was the month of July. Two days before our wedding day, Mr. Rochester went away. I will return tomorrow, he said. I love you, Jane. That night, I went to my bedroom early. My wedding dress and my wedding veil were in my room. I looked at them. In two days, I will be Jane Rochester. I said to myself. Then I went to bed. But I did not sleep well. The next day, Mr. Rochester returned. He looked at me carefully. What is wrong, Jane? He asked. Your face is pale. Are you frightened? I had a very strange dream last night, I said. It was a dream about this house. But in my dream, Thornfield Hall had no roof. The walls were burnt. They were black. In my dream, I tried to find you. But you were not in the house. 
Are you afraid of a dream, Jane? Mr. Rochester asked. No, Edward, I replied. But I woke up from my dream. There was a woman in my room. She was tall and heavy. She had long black hair. The woman was holding a candle, I said. She put the candle by my mirror. She put my wedding veil over her head, and she looked in the mirror. Then I saw her face. It was a strange, terrible face, Edward, I said. Suddenly, the woman tore my veil into two pieces. She threw the pieces on the floor. What happened next? Mr. Rochester asked. The woman held her candle near my face, I replied. She looked at me, and she laughed. Then she went away. This happened in your dream, Jane, Mr. Rochester said. It did not happen in my dream, Edward, I said. This morning, my wedding veil was on the floor of my room. It was torn. It was in two pieces. But the woman did not hurt you, Jane, Mr. Rochester said. Sleep in Adele's room tonight, my dear. You will have no more bad dreams. Chapter 9 Mr. Rochester's Wife It was our wedding day. We were going to be married in a church near Thornfield Hall. After the marriage, we were going to travel to London. I got up early. I put on my wedding dress and I went downstairs. Mr. Rochester was waiting for me. At eight o'clock, we walked together to the church. The clergyman was standing by the door of the church. There were two other people inside the church, two men. They were sitting in a dark corner. I could not see them very well. The clergyman started to speak. At every marriage, the clergyman asks an important question. He asks the people in the church, Is there a problem about this marriage? The clergyman spoke loudly. He asked this question, and he waited. There was silence for a moment. And then... One of the men in the dark corner stood up. He spoke loudly. There is a problem. These two people must not be married, he said. There is not a problem, Mr. Rochester said to the clergyman. Please go on with the marriage. No, I cannot go on with the marriage, the clergyman replied. He spoke to the man in the corner. What is the problem, sir? He asked. Mr. Edward Rochester has a wife. Mr. Rochester turned and looked at the man. Who are you? What do you know about me? He asked angrily. My name is Briggs, sir. I am a lawyer the man replied. I know many things about you. Fifteen years ago you were married in the West Indies. Your wife's name is Bertha Mason. She is alive. She lives at Thornfield Hall. How do you know that? Mr. Rochester shouted. The other man in the dark corner stood up. He walked towards us. It was Richard Mason. Bertha Mason is my sister, he said. I saw her at Thornfield Hall in April. Mr. Rochester's face was pale. For a minute, he was silent. Then he spoke quietly. It is true, he said. My wife is living at Thornfield Hall. She is mad. Come to the house, all of you. Come and see Mrs. Rochester. Come and see the mad woman. 
we all left the church. Nobody spoke. At Thornfield, Mrs. Fairfax and Adele were waiting for us. They were smiling happily. Nobody will be happy today, Mr. Rochester said. We are not married. Briggs, Mr. Mason, the clergyman and I followed Mr. Rochester. We followed him up the stairs. He took us to the top corridor. He unlocked a door and we went into a small room. I had seen this room before. We walked through the room to another door. Mr. Rochester unlocked this door and we saw a larger room. Grace Poole was sitting in the room, but another woman was there too. She was tall and heavy. Her dark hair was in front of her face. The woman turned and looked at us. I knew that terrible, mad face. I had seen it in my bedroom two nights before. The mad woman saw Mr. Rochester. She screamed and she ran towards him. Be careful, sir, Grace Poole said. The mad woman was very strong. She screamed and she hit Mr. Rochester. But Mr. Rochester held her arms. This woman is my wife, Mr. Rochester said angrily. I wanted to forget about her. I wanted to marry this young girl, Jane Eyre. Was I wrong? He was silent for a few moments. Then he spoke quietly. Yes, I was wrong, he said. I love Jane Eyre, but I was wrong. Now go, all of you. I must take care of my mad wife. I went slowly downstairs. Mr. Briggs, the lawyer, spoke to me. I am sorry for you, Miss Eyre, he said. You did nothing wrong. Your Uncle John Eyre is sorry for you, too. He read your letter. And then he met Richard Mason in Madeira. Your uncle is dying, Miss Eyre. He could not come to England. He sent me here. He wanted me to stop this marriage. I did not answer. I went to my room, and I locked the door. I took off my wedding dress. I put on a plain black dress. I lay down on my bed. I am Jane Eyre today, I thought. I will be Jane Eyre tomorrow. I will never be Jane Rochester. I must leave Thornfield Hall. I must never see Mr. Rochester again. My life here is finished. Many hours later, I got off the bed. I unlocked my door. Mr. Rochester was waiting outside my room. You are unhappy, Jane, he said. I am very, very sorry. Jane, we will leave Thornfield. We will go to another country. We will be happy again. I cannot be your wife. I cannot live with you, I said. I must leave you, Edward. Listen, Jane, Mr. Rochester said. My father wanted me to marry Bertha Mason. Her family was very rich. I married her. My father was happy. But I was not happy. Bertha was mad. And she was a bad woman. Nobody told me about her. She was married to me, but she met other men. She was drunk every day. She tried to kill me many times. After four years, I brought Bertha here to Thornfield Hall, Mr. Rochester said. Then I went away. 
Grace Poole took care of Bertha. I met other women. One of them was a French singer. She was Adele's mother. Adele is my daughter, Jane. But I did not love the French singer. I did not love anybody. I came home to Thornfield Hall. Then you came here and I loved you. I will always love you. Please stay with me, Jane. No, Edward, I said. I am going away. We will be unhappy, but we must not be together. Goodbye, Edward. Oh, Jane. Jane, my love, Mr. Rochester said. Don't leave me. I kissed Mr. Rochester. God will help you, Edward, I said. Quickly, I went into my room. I put some clothes into a bag. Later, I heard Mr. Rochester go into his room. Very quietly, I went downstairs. I opened the small door at the side of the house. I left Thornfield Hall and I walked to the road. It was dark. Soon, a coach came along the road. I gave all my money to the driver of the coach. I got into the coach. Many hours later, the coach stopped. It was ten o'clock in the morning. You must give me more money now, the driver said. I have no more money, I said. You have no more money? Then you must get out of the coach, the driver said. I got down onto the road. The coach moved away quickly, but I had left my bag in the coach. I looked around me. I was on a cold, empty moor. I was tired and hungry. I walked and walked. I had no money. I had no food. I walked until the evening came. At last, I lay down on the ground. I fell asleep immediately. Chapter 10 More House The next morning, I woke late. I walked along the road for many miles. It started to rain. Soon, my clothes were wet. I saw no one. I walked on the moor all day. In the evening, I was very tired again. I must sleep soon, I thought. Where shall I sleep? Then, I saw a light. I walked slowly towards it. The rain was falling heavily. But I saw a house near the road. I walked up to the house. I knocked on the door. I waited, but nobody opened the door. I stood outside the house. I was very cold and very tired. I could not move. I am going to die here, I said. Then I heard a young man's voice. The man was standing behind me. No, you will not die at Moor House, the man said. Then he unlocked the door of the house. He took me into the house. He took me into a warm sitting room. Please sit down, he said. Two pretty young women came into the room. Give this poor woman some food, Diana, the young man said. Give her some dry clothes, Mary. Then he spoke to me again. My name is St. John Rivers, he said. These are my sisters, Diana and Mary. What is your name, young woman? My name is Jane... Elliot, I said. I closed my eyes. Jane is very tired, Diana said. She must go to bed now. 
I stayed in bed at Moor House for three days. Diana and Mary Rivers were governesses. They were staying at Moor House for a few days. St. John, their brother, was a clergyman. They were very kind to me. Soon, we were good friends. One day, St. John asked me about my life. I was a governess too, I told him, and I told him about Lowood School, but I did not tell him about Thornfield Hall. I did not tell him about Mr. Rochester. I want to work, St. John, I said. Will you help me? I have a plan, St. John said. A few miles from here, there is a village. Many of the girls in the village cannot read or write. I am going to pay for a girls' school in the village, but I must find a teacher for these girls. I will teach them, St. John, I said. Good, he said. There will be a small house next to the school. You will live there. Three days later, a letter arrived for St. John. Diana, Mary, our Uncle John is dead, he told his sisters. But we will not have any of his money. He gave the letter to his sisters. They read it. Uncle John was our mother's brother, Diana told me. He was very rich, but he has given all his money to another niece. We do not know her. Soon, I went to live in the village. I lived in the house next to the school. Every day, I taught the girls. My pupils worked hard. But I was not happy. Every day I thought about Edward Rochester. Does he think about me? I asked myself. Four months passed. One day, St. John Rivers came to my house. He was holding a letter. He was worried. What is wrong? I asked. I want to ask you three questions, Jane, he replied. Is your name Jane Elliot? Do you have another name? Do you know Jane Eyre? I looked at him for a moment. I did not speak. I have some news for Jane Eyre, St. John said. Jane Eyre was a pupil at Lowood School, and she was a teacher there. Then she was a governess at Thornfield Hall, the home of Mr. Edward Rochester. How do you know this? I asked. What do you know about Mr. Rochester? How is he? I don't know, St. John said. This letter is from a lawyer. The lawyer tells a story about Mr. Rochester. Mr. Rochester had a mad wife, but he tried to marry Jane Eyre. She left Thornfield. Now this lawyer, Mr. Briggs, is trying to find her. I will tell you the truth, St. John, I said. My name is not Jane Elliot. My name is Jane Eyre and I was a governess at Thornfield Hall. I know Mr. Rochester. Did Mr. Briggs write anything about Mr. Rochester? No. The letter is about you, Jane, St. John said. Your uncle, John Eyre, is dead. John Eyre has given you twenty thousand pounds. You are rich, Jane. But why did Mr. Briggs write to you? I asked. My mother's name was Eyre, St. John said. She was your father's sister, Jane. Then you, Diana and Mary, are my cousins, I said. I thought carefully for a moment. Write to Diana and Mary, I said. They must come home. I will give all of you some of Uncle John's money. The next day, I wrote to Mr. Briggs. I gave St. John, Diana and Mary £5,000 each. I wrote to Mrs. Fairfax too, but she did not reply. 
Six months passed. I heard nothing from Thornfield Hall. I heard nothing about Mr. Rochester. Then, one day, I was walking on the moor. Suddenly, I heard a voice. There was nobody on the moor, but the voice was calling my name. Jane, Jane, Jane. That is Mr. Rochester's voice, I said to myself. Then I shouted, I am coming, Edward. I am coming. I ran to Moor House. I spoke to my cousins. I am going to Thornfield Hall tomorrow, I told them. I began my journey the next day. Chapter 11 My Story Ends Two days later, I got out of a coach. I was standing on the road near Thornfield Hall. I ran across the fields. Was Mr. Rochester at Thornfield? Was he ill? And then I saw the house. The house had no roof. Its walls were burnt and black. Nobody was living there. I looked at the burnt black house. I had seen this before. I had seen it in a dream. I was frightened. Where was Edward Rochester? I went to the village of Hay. I asked about Thornfield Hall. I asked about Mr. Rochester. Three months ago, there was a fire at Thornfield Hall, a man told me. The madwoman burnt the house. She was Mr. Rochester's wife. Was Mr. Rochester in the house? I asked. Yes, he was there, the man replied. He tried to save his wife's life. He went into the burning house, but the mad woman jumped from the roof. She died. Was Mr. Rochester hurt? I asked quickly. Yes, he was badly hurt, the man said. He is blind. He can't see. And he has only one hand. Where is he? I asked. Where is he? He is living at Ferndean. It is an old house, about thirty miles away, the man said. Do you have a carriage? I asked. I must go to Ferndean immediately. I got out of the carriage near Ferndean. I walked to the house. I knocked on the door. A servant opened it. I knew her. Oh, Miss Eyre, you have come, she said. Mr. Rochester has been calling your name. A bell rang in another room. That is Mr. Rochester's bell, the woman said. He wants some candles. There were two candles on a table near the door. The woman lit them and she picked them up. Mr. Rochester is blind, but he always burns candles in his room in the evenings, she said. Give the candles to me, I said. I'll take them to him. I opened the door of Mr. Rochester's room. His black and white dog was sitting by the fire. The dog jumped up and ran towards me. Who is there? Mr. Rochester said. Don't you know me, Edward? I asked. Your dog knows me. I put the candles on a table. I held Mr. Rochester's hand. I know that voice, and I know this little hand, Mr. Rochester said. Is that you, Jane? Yes, sir. I have found you at last, I said. I will never leave you again. Then I told Mr. Rochester my story. Why did you leave your cousins, Jane? Mr. Rochester asked. Why did you come back to me? I am blind. I have only one hand. 
I will take care of you, Edward, I said. But I don't want a servant, Mr. Rochester replied. I want a wife. You will have a wife, Edward, I said. I will be your wife. I will marry you. I loved you very much at Thornfield Hall. Now, I love you more. Mr. Rochester and I got married. After a time, his eyes were better. He could see a little. He saw the face of our first child. My dear Edward and I are very happy.